This week we look at how can we get into heaven? What really counts? Welcome to Heart for Church. Welcome, it's so good that you've connected in. You're really, really welcome. So glad that you're joining us today. Uh, if this is your first time uh, or you're visiting, then I'd love to direct you to our website and you can find out how to get information regularly by clicking on the new here button there and we'll send you uh, links to, to know what's going on, emails, etc. to know what's going on. In our talk this week, we're exploring how can we be sure that we're going to heaven? What are the qualifications to get into heaven? And first of all, we're going to pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for your love and your care for us. Thank you for families that you've placed us in, families and units, Lord, for people and friends that are around us. Lord, I pray for relationships. I pray for marriages. I pray, Lord God, for your blessing um, to bind people together, for love to be known in the people's experience and in their lives, for those that are lonely to experience uh, friendship and love around them. Lord, I pray for our community, Lord, that they may experience the love of God the know you, the the one who cares for them, that died for them, that wants only the best for them. Uh, Lord, I pray that that they will encounter you in dramatic ways. And I ask all of this in the name of Jesus. We'd love it if you would like the video by clicking the thumbs up button or subscribe to the channel, or you can also place a comment. Uh, All of those things increase the visibility and help people to discover Uh, the message is about Jesus, so I'd encourage you to do that. If you'd like to give towards the work of Harbour Church, uh, on the ongoing work of the the cost of the church, then then the place to go is the website. Click on the giving page and all the instructions and information that you want uh, are there. You can give online by backs transfer in different ways. We want to make it as easy as possible so that you can support the mission and the work of, of Harbour Church. Coming up, Uh, Shortly we've got the talk uh, and that's with readings from uh, Katie Smith today. Uh, First of all, we're going to join our friends from Soul Survivor for worship. Thank you. 
stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Without 
Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. Last week, we put teachers under the microscope because they are so influential. Uh, but today we're looking at the subject of followers. And Jesus addresses this topic in this Sermon on the Mount series that we're currently going through. And really, he's, he's wanting us to explore the question about who gets into heaven. 
Uh, what qualifications are there for people getting to heaven? Sometimes we have pit, the picture of St. Peter stood at the pearly gates of heaven with a ledger. And the, well, some people have this picture that he's got a list of good things on one side of the page and a list of bad things on the other side of the page against every person's name. And if the good list is longer than the bad list, then they're okay to get in. And most people want to think that they're, generally speaking, a good person. So is that the qualification to get into heaven? We'll explore that in a little moment. There are those that think the big names, the ones that do the dramatic and miraculous things that have a prominence, they're going to be the first ones through the gate uh, when it comes to getting into an eternal relationship with God. What about those that label themselves as Christians? Uh, people who call themselves Christians simply because of the, the family they're part of, the nation that they're in, the habits that they experienced when they were growing up as a child, uh, call themselves believers. But is that the criteria that God uses to judge who comes into heaven or not? Well, it's really important that we know why, because uh, as Stephen Covey says, you need to start with the end in mind. What is the qualification? What is the criteria for knowing that you're secure in your relationship and destiny for the future. What criteria does God use? Let's look at some of the verses that were read to us. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Our good friend John, who's part, been part of the church for so many years, has this phrase, and we probably have all heard him say it, and it's a delight to hear him say it, not my will, but your will be done. And there is so much truth contained within that verse and so much and that phrase and so much wisdom contained within it. It's an echo of the prayer that Jesus prayed. And we are taught to ask that God's will would be done, not our will. It's ultimately a decision to, about obedience. And it's saying, I want to bring Jesus into the decisions, the directions, and the choices that I make in my life. And so the question is, okay, that's a nice prayer to pray, and we should pray that prayer, but what does that look like in practice? Well, I believe it's very, very practical, very real. And when we are wanting to do God's will for our life, we do it because we know that he has the best plan for us. We're not trying to manipulate God to do the thing that we want to do. We're ultimately saying that I want God to be the Lord of my life, to lead me in the path that is best for me so that my life will be fulfilling and rewarding. And if we believe that God loves us and cares for us as much as he does, then we will trust him with the decisions that we have to make in our life. That might be decisions to do with our career choices, uh, the jobs that we go for and apply for, but be re relationships, be about our finances and how we manage our money and our generosity and, and uh, sharing of our, the things that we have. And it could be to do with where we choose to go and live, etc. All of these are big decisions. And the Bible is giving us broad principles, but it doesn't necessarily answer the detailed question about the who, the when and the where. But I believe, and I've proved in my experience, Christian and I, over all of the years that we've been married, have always brought God into all of the detailed decisions that we've had to make. And you do it in this way. You say, God, I want you to help us as we decide about X, whatever X is, whether it's moving or jobs or relationships or money. Um, and, and we say, God, will you show us the way to go? And then we would... Trust God that as we act, as we do, as we take decisions, that he's going to help us by either closing doors or opening doors. And our disappointment at a door being closed is tempered because we've asked God to be involved in it. And if the thing that we wanted to do most is suddenly not possible for us, then we trust God with that. We don't get into a, a hissy fit and a, and a tantrum about it. We might be a little bit discouraged at the time, but we trust him because we say we've invited you, Lord, to help us in those decisions. I think there is a great desire for us 
in our culture to plan for success, to work out the goals that we have for ourselves and to pursue those come what may, uh, sort of like uh, at any cost. And, and the life of a follower is different. The life of a follower is not cutting your own course. The life of a follower is following Jesus's direction for your life. And so it's so important in the big things and in the small things that we involve, involve him in it. We're talking about how, what's the criteria for getting into heaven and it's all about being a follower. Our culture as well has the thing about appeals process. Everybody believes that there is a claim to be made uh, the claim culture, if there's a fault that you can attribute to somebody else, then you'll claim. And, and we, we have a, a view in the West, particularly, that things are not fair. Some things are just not fair. And so somebody needs to pay for that. And somebody needs to be accountable for that. And Jesus anticipates this, this claim culture, if you like, this appeals process, when he goes on in these verses. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. So is the qualification to get into heaven about our words? There are many people who have got all the right words. There, you know, some people have got the gift of the gap, they say, don't they? Just they can say stuff to get themselves out of circumstances. But Jesus is saying that it's not about the words. It's not about um, the prayers that you would pray, the words that you would say, having the right language in the conversations with people. That's not the qualification. Is it about the activities, the deeds that we do, our words, or is it our deeds? Many people do spiritual things. Uh, this passage, Jesus says, there were some that will say that they've prophesied, they've cast out demons, or they've performed miracles. Is it about uh, these activities, these actions that qualifies you to get into heaven? Uh, Jesus says, no, it's, it's not those things. And, and we would be a bit shocked at that. I think we're surely, if somebody's prophesying, bringing a word from God in God's name, that surely they must be guaranteed of a place in heaven. The truth is when we know our Bible, we know that there are false prophets uh, throughout the Bible, people who purported to be, a bit like we were saying last week about teachers, that there are pseudo prophets, false prophets, and so that's not the mark. That's not the qualification that God's looking for. He's not looking at the words and he's looking at the deeds. He's looking at something much more funda fundamental than that. It's about relationship. He's looking to see whether we really have a relationship with Jesus. Jesus says in this context, in this passage, he says, there will be this phrase that I use. He says, I never knew you. That's a really chilling phrase for us to hear that Jesus will give at the, at the day of reckoning, that he'll say to some people, I never knew you. So we can tell from that that the qualification is about knowing Jesus. That it's about following him. It's about obedience to him, not just doing the things, because people can do the things without having a relationship with him. But it's about being a follower and in a relationship with him. To say, to hear the phrase that Jesus says is away from me, when normally Jesus' encouragement is come to me. All through the Bible, Jesus never compels anyone, it's an invitation to come. But there will come a point where the invitation is finished and the opportunity to follow has, has gone. At the end of our earthly days, the opportunity to choose to follow is, is, is gone. Once we step into eternity, that come and follow me invitation is gone. And if we don't know Jesus, if we're not in a relationship with him, he will say, away from me, I never knew you. And I would encourage you, if you're listening to this today and you're not yet a Christian, then 
then you can have that opportunity. It's not too late to put your trust in Jesus. You're not guaranteed tomorrow, but you're sitting here and able to listen to me today. So you've got the moment's opportunity now to say, I want to be a follower of Jesus. I want to put my trust in you. I want to be certain of an eternal destiny in a relationship and, and start a relationship with God. And if you want to do that, then as you, as you may have heard me say before, we say there's simply three words that you have to say. I'm sorry, sorry for the things I've done which are displeasing to God. Please come into my life and thank you for dying for me on the cross and making it possible for me to have forgiveness. These three words in a prayer is all you need to do. So if that's you, then I would encourage you uh, to pray this prayer with me, echo it back in your heart and I'd love to be able to give you more information and perhaps you could do that afterwards by connecting with us. But this is the prayer. I'm so, God, I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong in my life. We're taking my own path. Just take a moment to think about what some of those things are. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for making forgiveness possible. Please come into my life now. Lead me in the way that I should go. Please fill me by your Holy Spirit. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And if that's you and you've prayed that in the sincerity of your heart, then it's a joy to say you can know the certainty of being in a relationship with Jesus as you commit to follow him and walk in his ways. Not going your own path, but walking in his ways. For Christians, I want to encourage you to live a life of obedience, not because you earn points, but because it's a hallmark of a follower that we follow after Jesus. Bring Jesus into the decisions in your life and choose to go that route. Get close to Jesus. Don't let relationship with him go cold. Draw near to him. Sometimes we can be walking with Jesus for a long time and, and we, we forget how much he loves us and how much we loved him grows cold. We need to draw back. And if that's you, I encourage you, draw back to God. And he says, when you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. That's his desire for you. Draw near to him because he loves you. And this is the mark that you're a follower of Jesus when you, when you know him and when he knows you. God bless you. You are here moving in our midst I worship you I worship you are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Because you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Make a miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are here.
see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Stop.